In this video, we will complete the subscribe endpoint. We will hit convert kit and we'll successfully add a user through the form. Now inside of the subscribe endpoint, we will create a try catch endpoint. And inside of the try, we'll firstly get all the environmental variables, the API key, API URL, and the form ID. We'll store them in a little shorter variables because we'll use them in the string in the fetch call. It will make it easier to, to use it. And for that reason, I'm just renaming them. And that's pretty much it. We're getting them from the local environmental variables. Again, we'll need to set them up once we deploy them also on the server. And now we want to create the shape of the object that we need to send to ConvertKit. We will call it data. We'll create a new constant data and it will be a simple object that contains the email, whatever the user types in, and the API key that we just got from the environmental variables. Okay, so this is the object that we want to send to ConvertKit. And now we will do the fetch call to ship it. We will create new response variable and this will get us the result of the fetch call. We will await for it. We need to make this function async as well. And again, we'll make another fetch call this time for the external library. And we will use the string literal to create the or reuse the variable API URL that has at the end the backslash as well. So we can only add, we only need to add the form. We don't forms. We don't need to use the backslash. And then the form ID, again, another variable slash subscribe. Okay, so this is the shorter version of the URL. And we need to also pass in an object that will contain firstly the body, the body of the response or the request that we send into ConvertKit needs to include the data that we've just created above it and we'll stringify it. Now we can also send the headers. This will be content type application JSON. Again, all this refers to the requirement from the API endpoint that we've talked about in the previous videos. So we're sending the headers and the last bit is the method that needs to be post. Okay, so this is the three things we need to send to ConvertKit to successfully subscribe the user. And now we can, uh, whatever the response comes from ConvertKit, we can uh, take all the errors. So anything above 400, anything that is not successful, we can just return it as one error from this endpoint. So that's why I'm creating another if statement. And if the response status is greater than 400, which means something else, something went wrong inside of ConvertKit, then we want to any of the errors above 400, always return 400 to the front end. And we'll send the simple error message, simple message that there was an error subscribing to the list. Okay, so that's the that's the handling of all the unhappy path, but happy days. If we get all the way to here, then we will return the status 201, which is successfully created. And the JSON will just give it the error of empty string just to clean up any of the errors, maybe from the previous calls. Okay, so this is the end where we actually subscribing the user to the form and inside of the catch error, we will return the 500 error. So if something when something goes wrong and we don't make the successful call, we catch any errors, we return the status 500 and we'll return the error message, whatever comes from the error. Or if, if, it, if the error doesn't have a message, we can also just stringify or just convert the error to string like this. This is a fallback, just making sure that whatever shape the error comes from, we will return it to the front end. Now it should all work nicely. We are returning the 200 or one or 500. And let's go back to have a look at the response options. If you are new familiar, if you are not familiar with the response status codes, just search Google 
for HTTP status code 201, let's search for the 201 is created. Okay, so if you're hitting an endpoint that should create something, in our case it's the subscription, then we're returning 201, 500 is internal server error, and 400 should be not found. Okay, so where is the 400? Here it is. Oh, bad request, sorry. 400 is bad request. Okay, so these are the responses. That's where you find them. And now we can test the, the whole flow. Okay, so if everything went well, when we save it, we should get the return or the response should be 201. Once we submit an email through the form, we should see it going all the way to ConvertKit. So let's do that. Open the convert kit and I need to do one more thing. I need to delete the old user. So I want to make sure there's nothing in convert kit. I'll delete the subscriber. And now we now we can add him again through the form. Type in the email again, hit sign up, and we should see in the network tab the call being made to convert kit. Let's hit sign up and here is the call pending and then resulting in the 201 and here is the error of empty string that we've defined. So everything seems to be working fine. We should be hitting convert it. And of course the, the user doesn't show up here until we validate the email. So that's what I'll be doing now. I'm going to the Gmail, clicking on the confirmation link and here is the subscription confirmed page. And if I refresh the page now, we should see the user back in the list. Okay, here it is. So we've successfully subscribed the email again through the form. That is a great news. And of course, the UI is still not responding. We don't have the loading state. We're showing the success message while we're loading. So we need to fine tune and tweak the UI, just making sure that it shows the right thing to the user at the right time. And that's exactly what we'll do in the next video. But for now, let's do a quick recap of the endpoint. In this video, we've changed the endpoint to be async await function because we need to wait for the result or re response from ConvertKit. So we've turned it to async function and then we've added a try catch block. Inside of it, we're getting the three environmental variables. We're creating the shape of the data that we want to send to ConvertKit together with the API key which makes it secure. You don't want this key to be in the front end. Otherwise, anyone would be able to subscribe to anyone's list or forms and you don't want to do that. So that's why we doing all this through the API URL or API path just to make it more secure. And then we are hitting convert kit with the right shape, sending the right body. And after, if the success or if the message is not 200s, but it's 400 and up, then we turning all the errors into one error and sending a simple error message to the front end. Otherwise we're sending empty error or response 201 when the subscription has been created and in the catch we catching the error and returning status 500. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now one more thing we can do, we can fake one of the error messages and break the endpoint just change the forms to form. Now the result of this will definitely should be one of the 400s because that endpoint doesn't exist. So let's fake it. Let's see if we can hit the form, enter email, and we should get the unhappy path. Here it is, 400 comes back. And the error is, there was an error subscribing to the list, okay, which is this one. So we successfully validated that even if the breakpoint or even if the endpoint doesn't work, we are returning some error, we are handling it. And this wraps it up. In the next video, we'll fine tune the UI.